Hi, welcome back to our Facebook Lives. I'm Tom Woskowski with Midwest Native Skills, and we're firing back up our Facebook Lives every other Thursday at 7 o'clock. We took a little hiatus for the summer. I hope you had a great summer. Uh, ours was good. Our classes, uh, uh, which were still going to go on into the fall, but the summer classes were filling up. We uh, had our, all of our plant classes, our survival classes, and uh, Coming up yet, we do have a few more coming up that I just wanted to go over real briefly. Uh, coming up in October, October 23rd and 24th, we have a Shamanic Journeys class coming up. On November uh, 5th, uh, this is a new one we're gonna shoehorn in. This is our Essential Oils class. This is gonna be on a Friday night, and uh, that class is gonna be uh, from seven in the evening to 10 at night. Uh, for those of you that want an introduction to essential oils, uh, we're going to have it so the class will be a $50 class for the information on 17 of the most uh, a common, most popular essential oils. We're going to go over the essential oils, we're going to give you recipes, what to do with them, um, and you can take those recipes home and go home and make all your potions. But in addition to that, uh, at the class, we'll have an essential oil kit, and this is optional if you want to purchase it. Uh, the kit's uh, going to have 17 of the essential oils we're going to be going over. Uh, the kit would normally cost about $200 because quality essential oils are not cheap. Uh, we're going to be offering the kit at about half that price. So the essential oil kit is optional. Uh, but the cost of the class for the evening, if you pay for that, you can just come take that and take all the information home along with the recipes. In November, uh, every fall, we have our homesteading classes. Uh, so on November 13th, we have our canning class. That'll be canning in mason jars, and we'll show you how to can meat, vegetables, and fruit. That'll be in the morning. That's a Saturday. Uh, that afternoon, we're going to be having candle making, dipping candles, mold making candles, teach you everything you want to know how to make candles at home and uh, so you have time to give those away as Christmas presents when you get home. On that Sunday, which is November 14th, we're going to have a, a wine making class showing you how to make wine right in your own home, um, which also would make a great Christmas present. And in the afternoon, we'll have a cheese making class. We'll be making mozzarella cheese and either a Colby or a farmhouse cheddar cheese in the afternoon, showing you all the steps and making you a cheese expert. The following Saturday, November 22nd, is going to be our soap making class. And that's an all-day class, and we're going to be doing the old-fashioned way, making live soap, uh, starting from the very basics, going into, into making the final product. So those are our upcoming classes. Uh, in one of our plant, or our, our several of our plant making classes this year, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Laura Zamanik, uh, and we got talking and found out that she's a vet tech, and we got talking a little, little more. And you know, we teach uh, wilderness survival, and but survival is kind of an offshoot of self reliance. So we got talking a little more, and being self reliant, we always have ourselves, but we always have our pets. So when we take our pets out on a hike or in the wilderness, uh, things can happen to them. So uh, Laura and I got talking. We thought it might be a good way to kick off our, our comeback here in the fall with a little uh, vet tech advice on how to take care of our pets. Be a little more self-reliant when we take our pets to the woods. And maybe have a little, uh, maybe at the end we can talk about a little survival kit. Uh, Laura's been a vet tech for 10 years. She's very knowledgeable. And I invited you here today, so thanks for joining us here. Well, thanks for having me. So uh, I know uh, uh, we had a puppy, and we're waiting for another one. We keep everybody informed. So if I uh, refer to Ani, this is our Ani. Uh, she's no longer with us, but uh, I'll be referring to stories. But you have a puppy at home too, don't you? Yes, I have a Bobo. Bobo? What's Bobo? Bo is an Airedale. Okay. And before that, I've always adopted pit bulls, so I love all dogs. I used to work in the animal field even before I was a vet tech, so right. lots and lots of years around dogs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I was thinking, I know a lot of times when we took Ani out either on a camping trip or sometimes to our classes, uh, I was always concerned, okay, what happens if something happens to her? Everything from a bee sting to if she hurts herself mm -hmm. or steps on something. 
So what can we do in case our pets get hurt or something? Where, where can you right. kind of lead us? Yes, and these are going to apply for also your backyard as well because we get a lot of emergency situations um, that start in the backyard, dogs have died in their own backyard, and then when you're out mm -hmm. on trails and things like that, you feel even more helpless in these situations. So the same rules apply regardless of where you are. And we'll just start with bee stings because that one's pretty quick. Okay. So for bee stings, uh, the first thing you want to do is give them some Benadryl. So I'm just going to grab this box. Yeah, you got, I, just, I just picked this up at the drugstore. Yeah, regular Benadryl like you would use, the active ingredient is diphenhydramine. So if you have some off-brand, that is the ingredient that you need in it. Um, so these are always sold for adults as 25 milligrams. I don't think they make any other size to be honest, sure. but always check the milligram of anything before you give it to your pet. But if your dog is 25 pounds, they get one whole tablet. If they're 50 pounds, they get two tablets. If they're 12 and a half pounds, they're gonna get half a tablet. And the reason why is for every pound, it's one milligram. So it's really easy. This is one of the easiest drugs mm -hmm. to know how to dose your dog. It's also available online. So you can just Google dog dose Benadryl chart or dog dose Benadryl and go on PetMD if you feel more comfortable. It is on there, I checked. Okay, <laughs> to yeah. make sure it's in writing though, it's not on a nice easy chart. So um, this is the first thing you wanna make sure you have. So if you're out on a trail, or I even had an incident with my dog kayaking, we're on the water, and then I don't know it was biting, some kind of bug, I was getting bit too, but he started getting hives. So the hives are just those bumps. Now how did you know he was getting hives? He was just I can see it. He wasn't itching. Cause he was sitting in the canoe and he was pretty still, but he started getting these raised bumps. Okay. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what if this gets worse? I ended up putting my hat on. <laughs> I was like, covering up my own, you get hit around the face and all this stuff. But um, it was just a weird situation. And I was on a 15 mile uh, river, I don't yeah. know, what do we call these? River, river trip, river trip, yeah. river trip, yes. And I was just really worried that, you know, there wasn't anything around. Like what if he starts to swell up? Because swelling is the scary part. Okay. So if you have some kind of insect incident, whether it's a bee or something else, you know it's an emergency if their face swells up, okay? So if it's just they got stung, you saw it, and you want to prevent a problem, give them the Benadryl, keep an eye on them. If they're getting little hives, give them some Benadryl, um, keep an eye on them. If it's convenient to go to a vet, you might want to just go and make sure it doesn't get worse. But if their face swells up, that means their throat is swelling up. Okay. So that's an emergency. You need to get to a veterinarian in that case. So okay. they'll have to give them injectables and get that down quick. Okay, now, by the way, we want your questions because we're going to be going through what we think you want to know, mm -hmm. but we want to know what you want to know. Mm -hmm. So make sure you uh, write in your questions. But I have a question right mm -hmm. now. How do you give your dog Benadryl? You're not going to yeah. give him the pill and give him a glass of water. So how, right, right. how do you give the dog Benadryl? So, a couple options. If you have something to put it in, like cheese, like Velveeta, uh, or not Velveeta, those little squares are really like yeah. flexible. Okay. Some people keep those on hand when they have dogs if they ever have to give them medicine. I have pill pockets at home. Okay. Um, those are also something I can put in like a little snack bag and take. They're basically a soft treat. It's like a cup. And you put the pill inside and you pinch the top closed, or you can just pull off what you need because honestly they're a little bit big and I just like, I like to cover the pill and that's it. Okay. If you have those, give your dog one without a pill in it on a time it's not an emergency that's so it. they understand that they want to eat it so they don't investigate it. Okay. If you have peanut butter, some people use that and stick peanut butter to the roof of their mouth and num, 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 it goes down. If you have nothing, you're going to have to pill them manually. <laughs> Okay, so, I, I filled them, got that? Yes. Okay. I don't recommend this if you're going to get bit, okay? Okay. Most dogs are okay with basic pilling procedures, but if you have a dog that is just not going to take it, your safety is important too, because okay. if your hands get bit, yeah. you know, it's just going to be a problem. So if you were going to do that, I'm just going to do it on me, <laughs> okay? okay? You would have them sit or stand. You might have to push them up against something so they don't move. Some people might put them kind of between their legs, but they might scooch backwards. So okay. being a vet tech, I'm used to getting behind them okay. all the way. And then you grab their face. So on either side of their jaw, you have bones right here. Okay. So you just grab their bone and you point their nose up a little bit. 
it naturally loosens their jaw. Okay. So now it's more pliable. Uh -huh. And you just take one finger, like that, and you throw the pill in. Okay. So I would go like... Down and throw the pill in. And the straighter you are, the more likely they're not going to spit it out. The okay. farther back you get it, the more likely they aren't going to spit it out. So being aiming is very important if you're going to manually... And this is a last resort. So basically you take in their little survival kit, take a pill pocket, take some peanut butter, take mm -hmm. the bed and drill, yeah. and hopefully those will work first. Yeah, and there's pill guns and things like that too, but honestly, if you've never used a pill gun, it might be a little difficult right. for you. Um, but most dogs, you know, will eat something. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the, the tree, I think, yeah. works in the peanut butter. But keep in mind, if they swell up really bad, you don't want to, you might not want to put a pill down there, because what if they're closed up enough, now you're causing a problem with their breathing. Right. Okay, so the face is a is a real bad sign. Face is a bad sign. We need to get Benadryl down there. Okay. Yeah, so if you see them get stung, just give them Benadryl. Okay, now, I've seen liquid Benadryl for kids. Would that be an option yes. if they're swelling up and things like that? Yeah, liquid Benadryl, we actually recommend that for dogs that are less than 12 and a half pounds because okay. it's hard to get less than half a pill sometimes. Um, but you can use it for any size. Okay. So that is another option. It's an option. And then you could just squirt that down there. You can squirt it in their <laughs> mouth, yeah. Okay. Well, we got bee stings and, you know. And Benadryl is good to carry in even your survival kit. I know we went over survival kits mm -hmm. and things. And I recommend that anyone carrying in case they have allergies or in case mm -hmm. they get stung by, by a bee. Yeah. Okay, so that's the most, one of the most common. Okay, great. Yes. What else is there? Oh, well, when it's hot outside, hyperthermia okay. is a big problem. I've actually had one of my students, uh, her dog was just in the backyard playing and unfortunately got heat stroke and died. Okay, what are, really the, signs? Quick. What are the signs? So, every dog's a little bit different, but knowing what is normal is most important. So, you might say, is my dog panting a lot? Uh -huh. Well, how much does he usually pant? Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so keep that in mind. There's more at-risk dogs for this type of condition. So if you have what's considered a brachycephalic breed, or those pushed-in noses, pugs, Boston Terriers, okay. those smushy-faced okay. dogs, those ones get heat stroke a lot easier. So what would you do for child? They're kind of in between. Some are really flat-faced, but some like on each other kind of Yeah. Long. Okay, so that's in between. With that breed, kind of even like boxers too, that their faces aren't pushed in as much as others, it's still not spread out as much. And as you say, a German Shepherd, that's a oh, long style. Yeah, that's okay, a long style. Okay. Yeah, so their throats in general are smaller, mm -hmm. and they don't have as much. The anatomy, honestly, is off. Like, we really probably shouldn't breed dogs that have swishy faces, but we just love how cute they are, and okay. so that's the thing. Um, but it's not good for really hot weather or for really, really long walks and things like that. So, um, really, you got to be mindful of your dog's breed. Mm -hmm. If you don't know their breed again, just look at their face. Okay. So, panting excessively, um, just acting more tired. It can get to the point where they get nauseous, have diarrhea. Okay. So, those are signs. I tell people, treat it like you would if you were going for a walk with a 98-year-old woman who was getting too hot. Okay. What would you do first, right? Okay. So you're not going to say, come on, Grandma, Keep going. we got five more miles to go, right. pick it up, right? right. You're not going to do that. So you're going to take it easy. If you are actually concerned, you're going to get them into some shade. Okay. You're going to get them some water. They need to drink water. Okay. So we're going to talk probably about, should my dog drink the water? But if you're worried about heat stroke, let them drink the water okay. because they can die very quickly is the problem. Okay. So you want to make sure you get them something. Um, if you, you put water on them? You can put water on them. Put it on their body um, it's better if you put it on them. Okay. Because like say you see like a creek, right? right? If it's really cold water, you can actually make it worse by putting them in it. Okay. So it will make their um, veins, they can go from being really exaggerated okay. <laughs> from this to this. Okay. And now you have another problem. Okay, so you just kind of throw water on them and they run off of them. Okay. Yeah, and you know, one of the ways that I also say, hey, is my dog too hot? You gotta feel them. So, usually the underbelly, the groin area doesn't have much hair. That's a great place to touch. So, you just reach your hand under and feel your dog, and you get a real good sense of how hot they are. Now, if they're doing activity, yes, it's gonna be more hot. And that's why I say, no, you're normal. 
Know what your dog is inside the house, outside the house, when they're obviously comfortable. Know what they are, you know, towards the end of a walk that they did perfectly fine on. Okay. Because you're going to feel the difference. Also, how hot is it rough? So. Okay, how about the nose? They always say touch the dog's nose. Yeah. Old wives' tail. Not true? Not true. So. Got that? The nose is not true. So if it's. If the nose is, is hot or cold or dry, that doesn't mean a thing. It's doesn't a breath. Mean a thing. We get it all the time. People, I mean, it's really common. That's what they say. Well, does his nose dry? Then they come in, they're all concerned. My dog's nose, it's really dry. Is that okay? So the nose is it's old, old wives' tail. Old wives' tail. But the air coming out of the nose, yes. I've used that. So okay. I'm like, like I, I just put my hand up. God, it's so hot. Okay. This is hot. We need to take a temperature on this one. Um, I'm glad you're here. Because <laughs> I always <laughs> thought that don't touch the nose. It's going to yeah. tell me something. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Um, I know. Uh, do we have any questions so far yet? I don't know. I don't have any questions. I have some people who have joined us. Who joined us? I like to say hi to people yeah, yeah. who joined us. Terry. Terry, hi. Thank you for joining us. Terry has a Chihuahua mix named Missy May. Missy, Missy May, Missy May. Um, good name, good name. Brent. Hi, Missy May. <laughs> Brent is on. He has a Jack cattle dog named um, Trixie. Hey, and Trixie. He, I have Trixie's watch. <laughs> and a German short hair named Jack. Jack and Trixie. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wonder who rules that. It was Trixie or Jack. I would say it's probably Trixie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Teresa um, is on with us. Who? When, who? Teresa. Teresa, okay. Wendy's on. Hi, Wendy. She was. Wendy mentioned that there was a survival guy on TV with a golden retriever and it collapsed from heat. It was very scary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should have watched that. Yeah, definitely emergency situations on the heat. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know one thing we were concerned with, with uh, Ani, and it never happened, but if we were out for a long walk and she hurt her paw, or somehow got hurt, and it's like, okay, she was like 60 pounds, and for a short distance I could carry her, what if it was for a longer distance? What do you do? Right. How can you get your dog, or, you know, is there anything you can do? Yeah, so first I would personally check the paw. And pulling the leg backward is easier than going forward. A lot of people want to take their paws and go like this, right, if it's the front. Right. But it's actually, they're usually more willing. Think of like how people work on horses. You know, they take the arm. Under, okay, back. Yeah, and get a little look. Because sometimes when they're out, they might get something stuck in it. Then you can pull it out if they'll let you. Now, okay. say you're going to pull something out, but you, again, want to protect yourself. Right. Okay, there's a certain way to tie... I wish I brought something now. If you get some sort of material or take your shoelace off, okay. okay, you would make a loop and then you would kind of go over their muzzle, just like you did the first step of tying your shoe. Okay. Okay. And you come down once and then you come down under and tie under. Okay, I can, I can visualize that. You come over and make the first thing and go down and cross. And then you come back up and then you tie it in a bow. Okay, I can okay. do that. So that would be a quick way. You can again stand. Yeah, stand, have your dog against your legs. Put your arm over so their neck cannot whip around this way. So the dog's next to you, okay. Yeah, so their neck would be on okay. this side. This is his face. Okay. And then that way there's a little control there. And then, you know. You can you have your you hands and pull it, yeah. something out. Yeah. So first check that. Now if they actually, you know, broke something yeah, that's or a situation. really arthritic and maybe it's just kicked up to a level that they can't handle. Um, if you have something like a towel, a shirt, um, you know, you can put it under, again, the groin area and use it to help them out. So you would bunch it up on the top okay. so it's looped under and just hold it and, kind of help and them you're out. going to be kind of holding up part of their weight. Gotcha. I would never thought of that. And you can do that in the front too. You're going to have to cross through and go under their chest and kind of let them, you know, when they go to put some weight down is when you kind of pull up a little bit uh -huh. to take some of that off. And hope somebody, if you're by a road, hope somebody sees you and gives you a ride. Yeah, that would be something. nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, never, I never would think of that. Yeah. Okay, so we have those situations hurt. Uh, what if you get some bleeding or something? Uh, do, you, do you do the same thing with put pressure on the on the wound? Yeah, same thing with people. Um, you can put some pressure on the wound. Um, 
I mean, in your class, you talked about, um, why can't I think of it now? Yarrow. Yarrow. Right? I'm sure that would be fine, just the same as you do where you chew it up and put, you know, it, you can put it on there okay. and see if that helps. Um, hopefully, it's nothing too terrible that happened. Um, okay. This is, I don't know about with dogs, but I know with people, it's like, say, someone gets shot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you have a tampon, you can stick it in the hole, right. um, things like that. Again, that's something, you do something temporary, address the situation, take them to a veterinarian. Okay, so uh, again, stop the bleeding is the main thing, put pressure, mm -hmm. uh, stop, get, yeah. get, get them to medical. Attention. Yeah, if it's on the, like say it's on their side, you can even use their own body weight. So like say they are laying down at this point. Okay. Make them lay on the side, the bleeding is, and you can put, um, like a shirt or something under and just even push on them. If they're like not wanting you to touch it, uh -huh. but they'll let you touch the other side. Uh -huh. That way you can, it puts pressure on it indirectly. I guess there's nothing, cause dogs, if they're hurt, they might want to get up and walk and stuff mm -hmm. and you're trying to keep them down and you're almost fighting mm -hmm. with them. Cause yeah. there's it, it, probably nothing you can really do about that. Yeah, it's it really depends calm. on the what they're doing. Down and, yeah. Okay. So I have a question for you. How do you know if the pavement is too hot for your dog if you're walking or running? Just touch it with your hand. It's one of those things like, you know, what's hot for us is hot for them. I feel like they can tolerate a little bit more than us just because of their pop heads versus your bare feet. But black top during the summer is always too hot. A lot of times I consider just regular sidewalk too hot during the, you know, the heat of the day. So I would walk my dog either it's one of two things, you gotta get up early and do it before your day starts, or walk them at night. If you're on a trail, you know, you're fine, but when you're working with these different pavements, it's too hot and... You try to get them to walk on the grass if you're walking in the city, but people will like you walking on their grass and all or that. Or sometimes the dogs don't wanna walk on the grass, even if it's too hot. Right. And the thing is, is these, the burns that they get on their feet, sometimes they might not actually show up until two, two three days later. Okay. So you might think, well, their feet don't look burned, so it must be okay. Well, it's not immediate all the time. So yeah, just touch it with your hand if it's like, ooh, no, like don't do it. And if it's a 85, 90 degree day, not a cloud in the sky, and it's one o'clock in the afternoon, it's yeah. probably pretty safe to assume it's too hot to walk you off. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's when you go, well, we're gonna have to drive you somewhere or wait. So right. dog parks, trails, those are the places to go if it's hot so you can get on some regular ground right but mornings evenings would be the best mm -hmm. that makes sense and honestly i never thought about that it's a nice day okay let's go for a walk but you have mm -hmm. to think they are on the pavement they are on the uh, yeah black top yeah of and i have actually you know i would always hear about it but until i put my hand on it to actually feel it that really makes it click for you of how hot it actually is okay so, so you kind of have to see things from their point of view mm -hmm. that's a good question so laura can you talk about ticks um, treatments, issues, risks? Yeah, so ticks, let me grab really fast, I'm going to show you something. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're also looking for other topics for the future, so if you think of something, like this was a great topic, but remember, we're always looking for topics for later this year, because we're going to be going all the way through the summer and spring, so I'm looking for topics. But, uh, yes. What do you have? So, a couple of things, we'll talk about the medications and all that. Um, I have a tick key. Have you heard of these? I've never heard of them. Oh my them. goodness, you have not heard about this. Okay, no. so this is, I don't know, an $8 purchase basically. I got mine at Duluth Trading Company because they have them in store. A lot of places you have to buy them online now. Mm -hmm. But I've used these several times. It's a lot easier than anything I've ever seen or tried because I've done the hemostats and some other things. Um, you don't want to burn ticks off. They can vomit in you and give you diseases. Okay. You don't want to do anything like that. You need to manually get them off. So, with this tick key, I don't know if you guys can see this, there is a teardrop shaped cutout in the, in the metal, okay? So their body goes in this fat part, and you put it flat against their body. So if okay. he was right here, and you just pull straight across, keeping it against their skin. You do not pry it, okay? It's just a simple pull across the skin, and it gets them squeezed out. So it gets smaller, 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 and then they're like, ah! <laughs> And that would work they on people, let, no, too. It works on people. I've used it on people. I used it on me. <laughs> okay? So oh. this is the easiest thing. It's one of my favorite purchases for outdoor anything. Gives me peace of mind, too. But I've used these probably on people four times, on dogs twice. And never have I ever left a head in 
with this and you actually see their head, a lot of times it plucks a little bit of skin out, which is a good thing. If you remove a tick and you see skin, then you most likely have the head because they were hanging on for dear life and they actually ripped your skin with their whole body. Yeah. Well, can you just put one more thing I'm going to be putting in my oh, yes. survival kit? And it's probably going to end up in our school store in about a month or so. Yes. So with tick medication, um, the preventions that you see, especially I always say buy your stuff from a veterinarian because at the pet stores you don't know if this product is safe. So I always just say to be safe, go to your vet. Also, they store it at the proper temperature, which you might not have at these other places. But you're going to see them actually be attached to your animal. They don't, they don't repel the ticks. They have to actually bite and feed, then they get poisoned. So every, um, you know, every different product has a different amount of hours it takes to kill them. A lot of times eight hours is common. So they'll eat, they feed, and then they fall off. So if the tick isn't humongous, usually we would just tell people you're fine because you got it off in time. They have to be attached for 36 hours before passing disease. So I'm a little paranoid, so I say, oh, if it's been within 24 hours, I feel comfortable, but really it's 36. <laughs> but you're good. If they've been attached for that long or longer, then you should go in and you need to get medication because that way you can prevent getting Lyme disease. So they've done studies on dogs. Um, which company was I listening to? Next card. Um, I guess, I don't know if it was their product or another product, but they talked about a tick study and they put ticks on a dog and lots of ticks <laughs> on these, on a bunch of dogs. And they ended up necropsying them later. So they said, hey, did this dog have symptoms? Did he not have symptoms? Because a lot of times you get um, lameness that will go from, oh, today he's limping on his right front leg. Well, tomorrow it's his left. And then you're like, wait a second, did I get that wrong? Mm -hmm. Then then it's his, right, his back leg. You're like, no, okay. Why is it traveling around his body, but now he's fine up here, right? That's very common for Lyme disease. So then they looked at these dogs, and there's some that were obvious like that, and others that had no symptoms. But when they did a necropsy, they all had arthritis. So definitely worth getting the medication that if it was attached long enough, then you can ward that off so they don't have to live a whole life. <coughs> now that would be hard, like with Adi, she's got so much fur, I'm never gonna, I never saw her skin. Yes. So with a, a long-haired dog, what you're kind of just... Prevention. Working. Prevention. Yeah, monthly prevention, it does wear off. So the beginning of the month, it's more strong than the end of the month. Right. So if you're gonna go to Pennsylvania right. and go in the woods there, there's more ticks. So personally, if it's been past three weeks, we're getting that three week mark, I would just give it a week early okay. because it's worth it. So. Prevent, prevent. Mm -hmm. Are there any uh, negative effects for the dog? Like they take medication? Sometimes we don't want the uh, prevention to be worse than the. Right. Cure. Yeah. So that's one of those things. Like I'm slightly holistic with how I do things. Right. They say, um, you know, you don't have to worry about the side effects and things like that. With regular purchases from vet stores, I have not seen any myself because okay. I worked for 10 years at a clinic. Um, I did see terrible effects of other products okay. for fleas and ticks that you get just like, gosh. Okay. There's some, I don't even want to mention the, the names of them okay. just in case, but yeah, those ones, I just don't trust them. We so can you the extra dollar like to go to your vet and get the good stuff? Exactly. And they have promotions. Ask if they have promotions. You might be able to buy, you know, three and get one free, okay. things like that. Okay. Yeah. So when you'd like to know, do you brush to keep them from bringing ticks in the house? Uh, I don't know. If they're attached, I don't think a brush is going to get it off. If they're not attached... You know, it might pluck them off that way. Um, some people do feel all over on their dogs for ticks. Common places that you would check, the ears. They, they love to go up by the dog's ears. Um, even You can even check in their ear. Um, but I've seen them anywhere inside the mouth. Really? They, they'll go anywhere. They'll I know anywhere. people, they like warm, moist places. So probably the groin on the dog. Just like yeah, the and that's an area too that doesn't have tons and tons of hair, so it is a little bit easier. If you think it's a tick, it's probably a tick. Right. And one of the things that I do to check is you look for legs. So if it's sticking off, 
you got to pry their body up a little bit and see if there's little legs yeah. hanging out. <laughs> you got to do what you got to yeah. do. Also, some people think, oh, this is a growth on my dog, right? And it's getting bigger, like really quick. No, it's a tick. It's probably a tick. It's filling up with blood. There are all kinds of different colors. Yeah. yeah. And the bigger ones are dog ticks, the real small ones are the deer ticks, which we have to really be worried about. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of ticks, like you think, oh, you know, my area doesn't have ticks. Mm, yeah. If you have deer in the area, you have ticks. Oh, you have woods, you have ticks. Well, they've even done regular, like really, really suburb areas, and they'll put a CO2 dispenser because they're attracted by our breath, yep. and they'll flock there. Yeah. So they're everywhere. They're, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions out there about your pets? Or? So what should I have with me when I'm traveling? So we took Ani everywhere. So whether we were, you know, going hiking somewhere or whether we were just driving somewhere, what kind of stuff should I have on me? Right. Um, with the pill pocket, we said. Yeah. Okay. And maybe some peanut butter. They have little uh, packets of peanut butter. Yeah. Like, I don't personally like peanut butter, but some people love peanut butter. Right. I think pill pockets are the easiest, it's such a great invention. And Greenies is the brand you want to get. They're they're so much better than the other ones. Really? Okay. Oh yeah, because so I've tried different ones and mm -hmm. they're just softer. They mold around the pill. The dogs love them. Okay. Cats seem to like them too. If you ever need to pill your cat, um, give it a try. But um, yeah, those are my go-to. They're not messy or stinky. Like okay. they're a little stinky, but not the way some other things can get. And so if you have to leave it in your car and it's hot, right. it's not like a piece of cheese that's going right. to get disgusting. Okay. Um, so I'd have that. I'd have the tick key. I'd have some Benadryl. Know the dog's dose of Benadryl before you go. Right. So in case you don't have service. Um, and then water. So this can be done different ways. If you're just going like a short hike and you just need to kind of give them a cool drink before you go again, you know, keep a jug in your water, keep a bowl, I'm um, sorry, keep a jug in your car and keep a bowl in your car. Right. If you're going to be hiking for some time where your dog's maybe older, has something else going on, um, if they've ever had something like heartworm that's going to weaken their heart, which weakens their circulatory system, mm -hmm. you know, they're a little bit more high risk. Uh, Walmart, I saw this thing, it was like a bigger water bottle and the base had a bowl attached to it. It, kind of like, down. it was like a, I don't know if it's like silicone, okay. but you pry it off and then you can fill it up in there. That's cool. They have other drinking things, but a lot of times they're like skinny. This was like a real bowl. Oh, okay. Which, you know, most dogs are so used to drinking out that that would be fine for them. But water is one of the most important things okay. that you can have for your dog. Okay. I know for people, uh, they say uh, in your water bottle, I tell these people in our, our class, if you wanted to get into your system better, you put a, in your water in your quart, put a pinch of salt and a pinch mm -hmm. of sugar in there. Can you do the they same thing you Yeah, they can even have things like Gatorade, Pedialyte. Okay. So if your dog is just maybe dehydrated at the end, you feel like, you know, you want to give them a little boost, give them some Pedialyte. So get some electrolytes in there, mm -hmm. just, like a, just like a person. Just like a person, you can, if they don't want to drink it, you can make ice cubes out of that kind of stuff and give it to them if they like ice cubes. Okay. Um, you know, just something that makes them more enticed if that's kind of the okay. thing they like to eat. Don't give them too much like Gatorade because of the sugar, I'm sure. But. Yeah, but it's one of those things, if they need it, give it to them. then give it to them. You always worry about, I mean, as long as it's not toxic, you, you take care of what's really could turn into a disaster and just <coughs> prevent it from happening so you don't have to deal with it. And then if there's a little bit of side effect, like drinking out of a creek, you don't really want your dog to drink out of a creek. You don't want them to get um, diarrhea later down the road, get giardia, that's what causes that. But if my dog really needs a drink of water, I'd rather have to go to the vet later and get some pills to get rid of the giardia right. than have them get hyperthermia. Right. So you pick your balance. Right, makes sense. Okay. So what do we need to know about senior dogs and hiking that you kind of haven't talked about? Okay, so with senior dogs, and this even applies to And some, what age is a senior dog? It really depends on the breed. Right. The larger the dog, they can become senior a lot faster. It can happen at five years old if they're really massive. Um, eight to ten is pretty safe to call senior for most, most breeds okay. out there. Um, but you know, you know your dog. If you've noticed any changes... If they're slowing down, they're If they're senior. slowing down, 
people actually are really terrible at noticing their dog age now that I say that. Yeah, we don't want them to age. That's you don't want them to age. Okay, so let me go over. Eight to ten, okay. That's a good thing. Yeah, if your dog is slow to get up, he probably has some level of arthritis. So, you should probably <coughs> gonna go for more of an extensive walk that day or notice your dog has been slowing down or limping you might want to give them like a pre-med of something. So that can vary from more of a gentle thing like CBD oil all the way up to an NSAID like Remedil. It just depends on kind of where your dog's at, what level um, of like inflammation reduction do we need. And if I know, okay, I'm going to take my dog and he's going to live if I do this, but we're going to go, he loves it, I want him to live his life a little bit. Sure. You know, I might even start medicating him two days prior. Okay, okay kind of do it early, just like if you're going to have a headache, come on, it's nice if you take your medicine before it gets too too much in the thick of it, it won't work as well. Um, you know, you can do the day of, or you can do it a couple days prior, and then do a couple days after, and they're usually good. That's, that's the as-needed type of dosing when they're not on it every day. Okay, so you mentioned CBD oil for mm -hmm. dogs? Yeah, a lot of people have had success with CBD oil. And that's something I believe you can get at the pet store. I've not bought it myself, but you can... I mean, Chewy.com is one of my favorite websites to go and see what I can get. If it's something that a vet needs to approve, it will need a prescription. If it doesn't, it'll just let you buy it. So, and if you go... Um, one of the things... You know, I work at a regular small animal practice, cats and dogs, and a lot of times people that go to... Um, just like a vaccination place, mm -hmm. they end up coming to us anyway because maybe their dog has allergies, maybe this is going on. Well, if you're already a client of ours and you've been seen within, it depends on the clinic, but within six months, within a year, it depends on who you're talking to. Um, they might just say, oh, you need this. We know your dog. You can have this. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't have to pay all these extra physicals and things like that, but if you go just to a vaccination place and then you go to a vet clinic, expect that you're going to have to pay all those things just to get your arthritis medicine. They can't just give it to you, it's not legal. Okay. They actually have to do a physical. So also keep that in mind. And uh, I don't know if you guys want to talk about allergies. That's another yeah. thing that's important. Yeah, people... yes we do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's talk allergies. So if you notice that your dog every spring has an allergy and it gets to the point that you have to go get an antibiotic, it's really better to get the allergy medicine before the season starts, so you don't need that antibiotic, because nobody wants to put your dog on an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. It's not good for them if it's not needed, and it's not good for them to get it every single year when you know you can just prevent it with an allergy medication. Now, Benadryl <laughs> is great for insect bites and things like that, but for most dogs, it doesn't work for actual allergies. Really? Yes. Work for people? It works for people. For most people, but sometimes it doesn't work for people, right? Yeah, that's, that's true too. Yeah. It's kind of like that. So, okay. and it's the same thing with dogs, you know, maybe, um, now I'm losing nervous, so I don't have my meds in my mind, but um, what works for one dog might not work for another dog. So sometimes you have to play this game where you try something for a week or so. If it doesn't work, you say, hey. So you look at your vet and else. say, hey, I want some allergy meds? Yeah, now if they have you again as a patient mm -hmm. and they saw, Oh, last spring, um, we had to give you antibiotic and allergy pills. Did we do that the year before? We did that the year before. They might even suggest to you, hey, you might want to get a month's worth of allergy pills and start them at the beginning of April or whatever. They'll usually pick a few weeks before, like, you know, the, either the season has allergies or a few weeks before they would have seen him and say, start it now. You know, I know a lot of people will do almost, I know we were, do anything for your dog and money is really not a big mm -hmm. obstacle. So if you know your dog has allergies, I know for people you can do allergy tests and narrow it down to see what they're allergic to. Do they do that for dogs? They do that for dogs. Um, so you can kind of narrow it down, have these tests done and find out, okay, my yeah. dog's allergic to ragweed or whatever it is. Yeah. There's a couple different types of tests. Um, most people don't do it unless the medicines aren't working or they feel like, gosh, I don't know what the problem is, okay. right? So um, if you're gonna do that, usually you do a blood test. Mm -hmm. They send this, spit it down with the serum, send it off, they're gonna ask you questions as well, and they're gonna send it to a lab, then they'll give you a report back. Um, okay. There's also intradermal testing, which you'd have to go to a doggy dermatologist, 
and get that done. Mm -hmm. Um, that's for very severe cases. You wouldn't just do that because they're going to sedate your dog. They're going to take sections of their skin. Okay, yeah, that's kind of Yeah, extreme. that's extreme. Okay. So again, most people, they'll start with um, medication, see if it works, see what the duration is. So um, a lot of times people have a hard time deciding, is it a food allergy or is it an outdoor allergy? So if it's all year long, there's a good chance that it's a food allergy. If it's, we say, ears and rears, they're itching their ears and they're licking their bums, a lot of times it's a food allergy. Gotcha. But if they're licking their feet, it's probably from an outdoor issue. That's, that's a good tip. Yeah, okay. so ears and rears, food allergy. With your food allergies, if you have a couple options, you might want to start with just freezing your dog food. Really? Sometimes there's little like mites and stuff in the food that can cause them issues if you freeze it. People will just do, you know, like, they'll fill up like a gallon bag at a time and just freeze it and then they pour it in and, you know, do it so like that. So just freezing it overnight would be good enough? Mm -hmm. Okay, just freeze it. Does it have to be for a week or a month? No, pretty sure I've never done it. But I've had people tell me that they, they do that, they put a few bags in and then they pour it out as needed, okay. uh, just so it doesn't take up their whole freezer. Right. <laughs> uh, and that will sometimes help. Um, otherwise, it's usually the protein. So it's not, everyone goes, oh no, like gluten, 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 that was a, that was a people fad. Okay. <laughs> so for animals, it's usually the protein, and there are certain proteins that are worse than others. If it is because of wheat, it's because of the protein in the wheat. Really? Yeah. So, oh. but it's low on the list. It's not that they can't be. There are dogs that are allergic to gluten and things sure. like that. Yeah. But it's for them, it's not as high up on the list. So you would want to... Um, Switch your protein to what we call a novel protein, and if you can't find one in the store, like sometimes people What's switch. Novel protein? So like if they're on chicken, uh -huh. switch them to lamb. But okay. lamb used to be a novel, like no dog was eating lamb, you know. Mm -hmm. But now it's so common that people buy lamb dog food that it's not really novel anymore. Um, I don't know <laughs> what the cool new protein is now, but when I was at the vet clinic, uh, some people would buy kangaroo and oat. <laughs> Now that, okay, that's going to be more expensive. That's more expensive, yeah. So these these are things that if you if it's really not working, you can go. But it's worth it because you're not going to pay the medication fees. You're not going to have uh -huh. your dog licking all the time. They're not going to be irritated. So to me, it's worth it. It is more expensive. Some places charge more than others. That is a shop around. Like call up places. What do you charge for this food? Figure it out because you don't have to buy it at your vet clinic. You can buy it from somebody else. Um, it's nice if you can buy it from your vet clinic. Like, I'm all about supporting your vet clinic. Um, sure. they all, they'll keep records of what you have. They know your dog. They know you. It's a great system. But if for some reason their, their price is, you know, 15% higher yeah. than this other place, just do it. And honestly, people I've worked with, they were always okay because they just wanted the animals to feel better. So... So you want your food to have protein, you don't want to do all this corn, and all, that's probably not... I mean, if they have some of that stuff in there, it's, it's whatever, right. right? But it's not like, um, you know, avoid gluten, all this stuff. And Then we had a phase where we were worried that all these, um, all these like gluten-free diets were actually causing heart inflammation, okay. myocarditis, and then, you know, I heard that that's, oh, it was not proven, but honestly... I know people that, again, they went gluten-free, then they had issues, and then it was just this big thing. So um, the story behind that is dogs can make their own taurine, okay? It's essential. They need to have it. They can make it. They, they eat stuff, and then their body makes it. Cats do not. Okay. So they actually have it added to their food. Okay. But they don't add it to dog food because they don't need to, right? Got it. Well, they were not sure if um, dogs stopped producing taurine on these gluten-free diets. So that turned into, okay, well, is it the food? Should we tell people to stop buying these foods? So a lot of veterinarians do not recommend gluten-free foods, but some say, no, that's been disproven. You can do that. Personally, I don't take the risk because to me, I'm like, as long as they like the food and it, it's, it's like, not hurt, huh? it's a good food. Like, I don't think it's to be gluten-free, so I'm just gonna avoid it. So to me, that's like the safer way to go. Mm -hmm. And, Personally, I do have it as a worry. I'm not a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. I'm not into the res I'm not doing the research, so I am not the like expert on that. But again, that is a concern, and I think it's a fair concern. And sure. yeah.
Because young, young dogs, young dogs are getting heart problems. Okay. So. Okay, I have another question for you. So what do you think about dogs and water safety? Um, doggy life vests? Should people let their dogs swim in streams and things? Yeah, I think that depends again, like where are they swimming? I, I like doggy life vest. I actually, <laughs> I didn't know if my dog could swim when I took him canoeing, so I, put it, I bought a doggy life vest for it. Sure. It's always a safer option. Maybe they get fatigued because dogs will just act like everything's normal. Like people are babies. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we have a procedure down where like I need to relax the rest of the day. <laughs> you know, yeah. we might cry about something. There are some dramatic dogs, but most dogs will always act like it's fine. And that's what most animals do. It's a protective thing, plus, you know, the yeah. drama doesn't really do much for them. Um, so it's kind of harder to tell if they're getting too tired. So I'm all about um, doggy life vest if it's water that, you know, is too deep for them to stand up in. Gotcha. Safety first. Safety first. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, let's see, I moved one other question. Did I? So there was like blue green algae causing a problem okay. too. Yeah. Um, so people would take their dogs camping and all this stuff and find right. these pools of water. Um, so that's definitely legit. <laughs> so in general, again, we don't encourage dogs to just drink whatever water. And you know, if you don't know the water source for swimming and things like that, it's a concern for people too. People have gone swimming and have died, you know, because of the blue green green algae. So that's one of those things too to watch out for if you are. You know, letting your, because some people too, they're like, you know what, my dogs always drink from streams, I'm fine, I'm going to keep doing that. Um, you know, that's streams, not lake, like standing mm -hmm. pools of water, so mm -hmm. keep that in mind too. If you are having them drink water outside or plain water, just out in nature, moving water is usually much better than just like standing pools of water. Just like for when I talk about water purification, mm -hmm. faster moving water is going to be better for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My gosh. That's a lot. That's a lot. But we love our dogs, and I, I think you gave us a lot to go on. Uh, do we have any more pressing questions, Cheryl? I know we're oh, coming up. I have one more thing. Oh, good. I forgot. No. Do, do not like play fetch with your dog with pine cones. No, why not? Pine cones. I've known people. Actually, one of the vets I worked with her. I don't know if it's her dog or family's dog ate a pine cone. Okay. And that's one of those things that doesn't pass. Oh. So that's one of those things, like again, if you're outside for some time and you're playing around with your dog, I would avoid the pine cones just in case they start to, once the game's over, start to chew on it and eat it and things like that because that can block them up. Then you have to pay a bunch of money <laughs> to get it removed. To get it removed. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be painful. It would be painful, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And then in that case, if you're worried they ate something, you're watching for um, vomiting, diarrhea, or not wanting to eat, or all three of those. Really? Okay. Anything else come to mind? You're like a wealth of information. <laughs> really cool. You know, anytime we talk, I just have like, we, we yeah. come up with new things with the dogs. I know. Well, if you have any other questions, I'm going to keep Laura as our vet tech on <laughs> call. So, again, you can uh, uh, email me with your questions, either on Facebook or Tom at Survival School. And I'll make sure I get the answer and we'll, <laughs> we'll post the answer. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep her busy. Uh, but again, if you have any uh, suggestions or what you'd like to buy, hear about on future Facebook Lives, please let me know. Uh, check the website out, uh, survivalschool.com, if you'd like to sign up for any classes. And uh, anything else, Cheryl? You can check out our YouTube channel. Check out our YouTube channel. We've posted a, a several uh, uh, YouTube videos over the summer. We have. Uh, no Lemon Lemonade. I watched that one. Did you? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some plants. Uh, we posted some plant videos. We have some tarp shelters up. So uh, check out our YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you, I think on YouTube, you have to like us or subscribe to us or whatever you have to do. Please do it so we can get some more subscribers. So until two Thursdays from now, thanks for joining us and we'll see you then. Thanks Thank again you. for joining us. Thank you.